My task was to produce two short promotional TV advertisements, a poster and the front sleeve for a new video game. Because the brief outlined that the adverts were for a new video game, I had to come up with my own and I decided on a football themed computer game which I called 12 Yards Out. In the initial stages of production I looked at several video game adverts. Evidence of this can be seen on the blog that I documented all my progress on. Some of the adverts that I looked at were the Grand Theft Auto Vice City advert, Call of Duty Black Ops and FIFA's 10 and 12 adverts. Once I decided that the video game was to be football based, I looked more heavily into the FIFA adverts and I drew a lot of inspiration from the FIFA 12 Christmas advert. A lot of similarities can be drawn between that advert and my first one. After looking at the adverts that I had previously analysed, we can see that the first 12 yards advert matches the convention that can be seen in all of the real life ads, where the image frequently cuts from one shot to the next quickly. In 12 yards out, the character performs some tricks with the football with the film cutting every couple of seconds and the character is shown in a different location each time. In the FIFA advert, the people who appear are all professional footballers and they're all complaining about Christmas and the video cuts every few seconds on that, just as it does in my advert. At the beginning of both of my adverts, the logo for the game content rating board, PEGI, which stands for Pan-European Game Information, appears. Not only is this a legal requirement so that consumers are advised on the suitability of the game, it is something that appears at the beginning of a vast amount of video game adverts, traditionally followed with the phrase Peggy and whatever age rating the game is. This could be either Peggy 3, Peggy 3, 7, Peggy 7, 12, Peggy 12, 16, Peggy 16, or 18, Peggy 18, depending on the level of graphic content in the game. Because 12 Yards Out was a football game without any risque content, it would be rated as a Peggy 3, just like the FIFA series. The music that I used in the first advert is the Beyonce and Jay-Z track, Crazy in Love, which I contacted Columbia Records to ask for copyright permission. It can be said that the way in which I use this music breaks and follows conventions. It follows conventions in the sense that music with a fast beat, or in other words bouncy, is a common occurrence in football video game adverts. Take the FIFA 10 advert that I previously analysed, for example. This contains the 10 pole Tudor song, Swords of a Thousand Men. However, this, like the majority of the songs used in adverts like this, contains the lyrics and the music. I only used an instrumental piece of the Crazy in Love song. My print artefacts followed many codes and conventions, most you expect to see from video game covers and adverts. On the cover and poster, we can see the name of the console the game is played on. The company that produced the game, Red Skull Games, the age rating and the game name and logo. Separately, the game cover contains game stills, a barcode and a list of game features. The magazine advert shows advertising small print and reviews and ratings of the game. The main production and printing products were all tied in quite nicely. This was made a lot easier because I had such a small amount of footage to work with and the images that I had to work with were all taken from my raw footage. This is most noticeable between the main image on the poster and cover, which is an image of the protagonist from the adverts, which is played by myself. What is less noticeable is on the back cover of the game sleeve, it shows other screenshots from the advert. These are meant to represent gameplay footage in the absence of actual gameplay, because 12 Yards Out isn't an actual video game. Something that I almost tripped up on when creating a poster was adding the release date of the game. This is a common convention of video game production, and advertising which is mainly found in the TV advert and on the post of real life products. In both of the adverts it is made known to the audience that the game is out now. Out now. However when I was making the poster I was deciding on what date to display as the game's release date. In the end I just decided on the 14th of February and completed the rest of the poster and believed that I had finished the print artefacts properly. However after looking through the products again I noticed my error and promptly changed the poster so the release dates read out now and it matched the information in the TV adverts. The main idea that is being given off between the print artefacts and the TV productions is the idea that the player of the game can fulfil their dream through playing the game, that they can play as the manager or even a fan in any position on the pitch. This idea is accentuated through certain aspects of each individual product. In the poster and the front cover, the background is an image of a top European stadium and in the foreground is the main image of the protagonist. Because the audience can relate to the protagonist, this can give them a feeling of being able to go and replay the role of someone in the world of professional football, because the protagonist who plays the role of the audience is linked with the football world.
From the audience feedback that I conducted, I got a lot of constructive criticism back in ways which I can improve my products. I also had some praise for the things that they thought I had done well. However, there were vast amounts more criticism than praise. The main overwhelming thing that the audience did not like and thought that should be changed was my choice of costume that I was wearing on the front cover and poster. A staggering 55% of the participants in the feedback voiced their disapproval of the protagonist wearing jeans on the cover because it had nothing to do with football. Many stated they should be wearing shorts because that is a huge kind of convention of football as a platform, not just a video game. In an ideal world, the protagonist would have been wearing shorts in both the Amsterdam and Paris shoots. But in an ideal world, I would have filmed inside some of Europe's biggest football grounds, like the Nou Camp or the Allianz Arena, rather than in front of the Louvre Art Museum and on a random bridge in the middle of Amsterdam. As a protagonist, I was wearing jeans for both of the shots, mainly for the reason that I was on a personal visit to those cities at the time, but I did not have any shorts with me. The idea of filming on location in France and Holland was a rather spontaneous one, and given that I did take the camera with me, some may ask why I couldn't just take a pair of shorts also. This is a fair point, but I like the idea that the protagonist wears something completely unorthodox for playing football. Keeping in line with the code of conventions of this media type was the thing I was most praised for, but this idea of jeans and football is a good explanation for breaking these codes of conventions, and it also combines the idea that is presented in the second TV advert for the audience assuming a multiple role of player and fan. The other main criticism I received was in relation to my choice of font for the title. This drew disapproval for 35% of the audience feeding back. The font type I used for the titles is called Hobo Standard, and I applied a bevel and emboss and inner shadow effect to it to give it the deeper imprint it has on the shape behind it, which also came under criticism for being a shape unrelated to football. The chief put down to the logo was the front. The font looked unprofessional. I don't fully believe this to be true, as the font is one that combines a smart look with the more fun and friendly look that will appeal to both adults and children. As well as this, if you look at both the latest FIFA and Pro Evolution soccer covers, they also both contain a striking font that stands out but also has an element of youth as well. Now, there were quite a few remarks and pieces of feedback that did not make full sense to me or the individual did not elaborate on their feedback and were at times quite vague. The two main examples of this were that the name of the game should be changed as it sounds wrong, or to quote one example, stupid. The other was that the products need more info. I'm not quite sure if those that fed back to saying that 12 yards out is not an appropriate name for the game actually knew or understood the connotations behind the phrase. The phrase 12 yards out is a reference to the distance the penalty spot is from the goal line on a football pitch. And whenever a penalty shootout occurs in a professional football game, it is extremely common for the commentator to utter the phrase 12 yards out at least once. Considering the importance and high energy moment penalty shootouts are, especially considering the majority of them happen in semi final and final games of tournaments, the now 12 yards out is quite a bold, intimidating one. The criticism that the products need more info are puzzling to me because in both adverts we see the age rating, games company, advert content which shows the game has a football team, the name of the game and game cover, when the game is released and the system for the game to be played on. Then if we look at the video game cover, it shows the name of the game, game console and the producers, the age rating, features of the game and it even displays a barcode. It's the same story with the poster where it shows the game name, console and producers. The age rating is seen again, it tells us that the game is out now and it even contains one line reviews of the game. Throughout this project, I have used a range of media technologies throughout the planning, construction research, research and evaluation stages. In the, the planning stage, I began by going online, going through YouTube, mainly watching various uh, TV adverts for video games, just to get a sense, get an idea of um, what my project would evolve, what it would be like, what I would hope to get out of it. Um, I also produced a questionnaire on Word, as a Word document, um, distributed that, used that to get an idea of what my target audience would, would expect to see or want from my project. Um, as well as this, um, not just only in the planning stage but also throughout the entire project, I blogged my evidence of my work on blogger.com. Um, this helped me with the planning, I was able to document on there, keep, keep like a diary of um, what I was doing. I was also able to do this throughout the construction, the research and through the evaluation stages as well. Um, in the construction research stage, um, the main media technology I used then was the Sony HD camera. 
that was used mainly to rec well wholly to record um, the adverts. Both of them are used then um, a number of ways. Use the tripod to help me out there. Use a cameraman. Um, use the zoom function on that a lot. That was very useful. Um, and also in the construction, um, we used I used the Apple Mac um, and the software's on there to put it together. Mainly Adobe Premiere for putting the adverts together, for constructing it, for making the final pieces. Um, something else I also used on uh, the Mac was After Effects, Adobe After Effects. This was mainly for the title um, of the Nova game system. Um, that was put together very well, very easily through uh, After Effects. And the software mainly used for the print artifacts for the poster and the game cover was Photoshop. Use that to get... Um, some screen grabs from the uh, adverts to get um, and then put that onto the background um, of the websites I used. Um, also use those um, throughout the construction stage to um, find more royalty free um, images to use on the back such as the football stadium. Um, I also um, used Photoshop for that to um, uh, change that to put a filter on it to make it um, different that was helped to avoid copyright issues as well and lastly in the evaluation stage the main uh, technology I used um, it was the H1 zoom handy recorder which I used for recording this entire evaluation for um, uh, each question for um, responding to and discussing how the project went and something else I also used which was very useful in the evaluation stage was quick time screen recording and this was also software on the Mac this records the screen on the uh, Mac for whatever I needed and I use that to um, show evidence of my blog on the uh, evaluation uh, media technologies helped me massively through this um, and I was able to incorporate them all using very very well to create a successful project